So far we've seen probability with things like dice and cards and roulette wheels because they're really easy to figure out. That's classical probability. Then we also saw empirical probability from real life data that was tracked. But that leaves out a lot of things because there are a lot of things in this world that we can't track easily because they're too impractical or dangerous in real life. And we want to save time and money. And so we're going to find empirical probabilities, but from simulations, because we have the computers that are so advanced nowadays that we can use them to figure out probabilities for us. For example, a researcher wants to know the probability that a building will survive a tsunami. Well, they're not going to be able to just build a building for the heck of it and throw a tsunami at it. They're going to have to run it all in a computer model, put the specs of the building in the computer, run the specs of a tsunami through the computer and crash them against each other and see what happens. Dice rolls. I mean, dice rolls for a couple dice are pretty easy and straightforward, but the problem is that if you want to do a million dice rolls, it takes forever and it, you want to save time and money, so you're just going to have a computer do it. So I wanted you to see there are actually tons of dice roll simulators out there. So, so many. Um, so let me go grab one. So this is the first one in that list. Um, it's Roll Dice Online. And I can choose one of many different sized dice. So for example, 10 sided dice was, was what I was rolling in real life. But if I wanted to roll it four times, there, I would get a 7, a 10, an 8, and a 5. There you have it. Or if I want a six-sided die, but I want to do it seven times, boom, it's a lot faster than me having to do it myself. As a matter of fact, I think StatCrunch has a die roll simulator. Let me see here. Let me go to StatCrunch. And under Applets, there's simulation. Oh, fascinating. Could be a good place to get a project from. So if I click on dice rolling and I can say, hey, what kind of die do you want to roll? So I'm going to roll a six-sided die and I'm going to roll, for the heck of it, two six-sided dice. And I want to know their sum. And this isn't really that important. I just have to have something in here. So I'm just going to leave it as sum equals, I don't know, 100 or here. So you can see it, 400. And I'm going to say compute. All right, so it looks like it didn't do anything but it's it set it up. It's doing the sum of two runs. So I just have to roll the dice. So it's going to do the sum of two rolls. So let me roll a thousand times. It's that fast. It's so much faster than doing it yourself. And this sum thing, I can actually make it find, you know, the probability the sum was more than eight is those values right there. The probability the sum was equal to eight is that bar right there. The probability that the sum was less than eight is those bars right there. And it's finding the empirical probabilities here, but it's based on this simulation. If I run it again, it'll be a different value, right? If I run it again, it'll be a different value. It's a different value each time based on the simulation. So you could perhaps have a project eventually out of something like this. All right, so if I look back to the notes, they actually used a different one. They used, or I used, because I'm the one that did it, a GeoGebra um, student used the GeoGebra die simulation app um, and created the following output, which I can show you what that app looks like. So it looks like this. You can change the number of dice to one, two, or three, um, and then you can just say, hey, I want you to do 100 rolls for me, and it will do 100 rolls, three, a six-sided dice. So you can see the number of dice over here and you can see the last roll that came up was a 13. So it was one of these five values in the 13 bar. And you can do it over and over and now I've gotten to a total of 500 rolls by clicking the 100 button five times. Alright, so that's what was done for this example. However, it's not exactly the same. So a statistics student uses the GeoGebra die roll simulation available at that link and has the following output. How many sides are on these dice? Well, you can tell these must be six-sided dice, so six. How many dice are being rolled? Well, there's two. You can see it right here because it says two, but it also, there's two of them. How many rolls are simulated? Well, that's up at the top. That's the number of rolls up here. This is the number of dice down here. So I can see that there were 10,000 rolls. If you want, you can put a comma in there. It's just a placeholder. 
Now, what do the x-axis numbers represent? Now, that's very key. We will run into this several times with six-sided dice. A lot of games have you rolling six-sided dice, but then you add the numbers. So, for example, this is an 11. It's one of the 11s that's right here. That was the last roll. The 10,000th roll was 11. So, it's having the, these x-axis values are the lowest value you can get for adding and the highest you can get for adding and all the numbers in between. So it's the sum of the two six-sided dice. Um, for example, Catan, if you know Settlers of Catan, um, it, Monopoly, craps. Those games are all games where you roll two six-sided dice and you add the values. Now, what was the probability of obtaining a 10? Well, the 10 is right here. So 10 is 874 out of, and then all the numbers would add up to 10,000 because there were 10,000 rolls. So the probability of obtaining a 10 was 874 divided by 10,000, which would be 0 0.0874. Either one is fine. This is a fraction, that's a decimal. If you want it as a percent, it'd be 8.74%. That is also valid. It didn't ask or specify, so if you were gonna you know, write it down, I would probably just write the fraction <laughs> or the decimal. I wouldn't bother with the percent, but there you have it. Um, just as a side note, those are empirical probabilities, right? This is an empirical probability. Even though it's from a computer simulation, that's okay. That computer simulation counts as a tracking. This is an empirical probability. Um, gathered from simulation. Or based on a simulation, I guess I should say. but it is in fact an empirical probability for our purposes. All right, so we can imagine that now we need to determine, hey, what makes the different kinds of probabilities <laughs> what they are? And there actually is one other type of probability that we haven't gone over. Simulation isn't its own type of probability. It's just a way to get the empirical results that we need. But there is another kind of probability, which is the subjective probability. It's a probability that expresses an opinion of degree of belief about how likely something is to occur, but it's not based on data, right? That's the key. It's based on an educated guess. Yeah, see, so a subjective probability is not obtained from an experiment. It's not from an experiment. It's not empirical. It's not a replicable event, right? So this is an educated guess, edu sorry, educated guess based on belief. All right, so that leads us to the three. <laughs> All right, so what are the, the three ones, um, the three probabilities? So there's classical. Classical probability is this hypothetical based on logical analysis. You just kind of look at the die and imagine how it's going to be. Empirical is based on data, right? Real life observation. So this is real life observation, right? And then subjective probability is an educated guess based on belief. Oh, which I wrote right up above. They're fine. Um, subjective probabilities are legitimate because there are a lot of things in this world that are not repeatable. And if they're not repeatable, then subjective probability is your only chance of figuring something out, right? So it's often the only method that we have of assigning the likelihood of an outcome. But nevertheless, it's obviously not as strong as a classical or an empirical probability, right? Obviously, the, these two are better if you can manage it. But sometimes we can't, right? So these are better. I'm willing to make that judgment call. <laughs> but subjective probability is a judgment call, right? And a lot of times, that's all you've got. You don't have the data. You don't have a logical analysis available to you. And if you don't have data and you don't have logical analysis, then you're going to have to do it based on what you think. Right? All right, so let's look at some examples. So classify the following, classify the following probabilities as classical, empirical, or subjective. 
So a friend tells you, hey, there's a 36, or excuse me, there's a 60% chance they will be attending Julie's party this week. You say, are you going to attend? Well, that's a 60% chance. That's a subjective probability. That is totally an educated guess. Completely. And it's fine. I mean, you just don't have data, nor do you have classical probability. Classical probability is um, often games. Not always, but um, games and structured examples. If the example has a lot of structure to it, um, then that will be classical probability because you can figure out the logic behind it. But this does not have that structure. All right, the Red Cross in Jackson keeps track of the blood types of everyone that donates the blood at Jackson College's monthly blood drives. They estimate that the chances that the per next person to donate at the drive being type O negative is 8%, which is an important thing to keep track of because O negative is the universal donor. And so this is key right here, keeps track, that's empirical. They don't just hope and wing, right? They're keeping track. Keep track. Right? They're gathering data. All right, the probability of rolling a sum of seven or 11 on two six-sided dice, which is an automatic win in craps, is eight out of 36. So a seven or an 11, that means that the dice add up to 7 or 11. You didn't roll the dice, you're just kind of imagining it, right? So there's a structure to this, right, because they're dice. So this is classical probability, right? There's structure. And honestly, games based on dice and cards and things like that, they're always classical. Right, structure to game there's base it's based on pure logic you just kind of look at the dice and you can figure this out all right john edmund kerich a british mathematician was placed in nazi internment camp during world war ii this is a true story and while he was interned he cost tossed a coin ten thousand times and found the proportion of heads was 0 0.5067 Ah, so that's empirical because he was in this Nazi concentration camp. He had nothing better to do. So he actually gathered the data. Right, so since he gathered the data, that's empirical probability. So normally you think, oh, the probability of a heads is one out of two. Uh, that's classical because you're just imagining a coin and thinking, oh, it's one out of two. But he actually went and gathered this and did this while he was in the concentration camp. So that's empirical. I actually wrote that up right here. So the probability of heads equals a half. That's classical because you're doing it without tossing. The probability of heads equals 0 0.5067. He actually tossed the coin and gathered data. That's empirical. That's the difference between the two. This one's from real life data. This one is just from looking at a coin and thinking about it. Now, during the World Series of Poker broadcast on ESPN2, which is a fun thing to watch if ever you get a chance, um, even for a short period of time as a statistics and probability student, it's fascinating. Um, what they'll do is they'll show the gambler's cards and then they'll give a little percentage by that gambler's name. And they'll say, you know, 88% chance of winning the hand. Right? So what's happening is that's a classical probability. There's a computer that knows all the possible hands and the hands of everybody else that's there, and it just kind of analyzes them based on logic. So there's a structure to card games, right? Card game structures allow, allow logic to um, analyze the probabilities, analyze or give us the probabilities. It's not based on particular hands. It's based on the set of all possible hands. Right? It's not like they play and play and play, and that's how they keep track. It's that they know what the card decks are, and the computer model knows that. All right, so then a commentator on CNBC states that they think that next year's unemployment rate will be 5.4%. Oh, that is subjective. That is an educated guess. Future prognosticating by pundits. 
<laughs> that is educated guess. Now I know it didn't particularly ask for why for these examples, but it's a good idea for your own benefit to write it down why, because you'll want to know for your notes why you chose the particular ones that we did.